Hey everyone, we're going to see how to create unit tests for a Go application. So these tests will in include testing functions as well as we're even going to see how to test HTTP requests. So if we're creating like a HTTP kind of RESTful API server, we're going to be able to see how to test any of the functions that we use for serving content. Um, so something that might be otherwise complicated to do in another language. Um, so you'll notice that I, I do have Goland up. This is Goland by JetBrains. I'm going to be using it for creating my project. Uh, go ahead and use whatever IDE you are more, most comfortable with. Um, but if you're using Goland, let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to say new project. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it test project. And I'm going to say create after I define the SDK that I wish to use. With the project created, what we can do is we can go to test project and we can go ahead and say new, go file. And we're going to say simple application and we'll call this main.go. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, um, but we're going to go with main.go for this example. With main.go created, uh, let's go ahead and, and add some functions before we add our test cases. Um, so that way we can get an idea of what we're trying to accomplish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function outside of main. I'm going to call this a very simple add function. And I'm going to say value 1, and that's going to be an int. And I'm going to say value 2, and that's also going to be an int. So you can see where we're going with this. We're going to, we're going to be just adding two values. Nothing complicated, but, but the idea here isn't to create a complicated function. It's just to see how to test um, our functions automatically. So we're going to say return, and we're going to say value 1 plus value 2. Uh, all right, so too many arguments here, value one, value two. Um, let's go ahead and add these in quotes or in parentheses. So the problem here isn't that we have too many values here. I forgot to actually add a return in Go. So let's go ahead and add it. The return here that we're expecting is an int. So we added it, we saved it. Uh, let's go ahead and add one more function here. We're going to say function, subtract, we'll say value one. That's going to be an int, value two also an int. Let's remember to return what we're expecting here and that's going to be an integer as well. I'm going to say return value 1 minus value 2. So we have two functions. So nothing complicated. Uh, this is like programming 101. Um, it's what you'd see in a lot of examples. What the main thing that we're looking for here is actually testing. So let's go ahead and create a test file. So we can go ahead and say new. Uh, we can go ahead and say uh, create a new go file. Uh, let's go ahead and say that this one is actually going to be uh, called, and it's very it's very particular in what you call it. We're going to call it main test. So the the whole thing here is it has to be whatever you've called the main file, so uh, main go, and then it has to be uh, appended with an underscore test, um, and that indicates that it's a test file. So we've added this this test, um, and at which point we can start adding our test cases. So let's go ahead and say function. And we're going to say test add, and it's very important that you prefix any of your functions with test um, because that's just the way that Go, Go does things. So prefix, so the add function, uh, prefix with test. So we're going to say t, call it whatever you want. We're going to say testing.t, and uh, see my editor automatically added testing for me. But if yours doesn't, go ahead and import testing as part of Go. Uh, what we can say is total equals add one and three and we're going to see what total equals so add coming from our main.go file so we're going to say assert we're going to say no nil we're going to say t from testing we're going to say the total that uh, we're expecting here and we're going to give it some kind of custom error message so we're going to say maybe that the total should not be nil we can also say assert dot equal, and we can say t. We're saying that it should be equal to four, but this is the total that we're provided. And if it's if it fails, we're going to say expecting, let's say four. So very simple. And then we can save it. Um, assert uh, is unresolved. So what we can actually do is we can actually um, do a go get. So we'll open up our terminal here. Uh, what we can do is we can say go get, and this is actually a third-party function. It's not absolutely necessary, but it does make your life a little 
a little more convenient. Uh, we can say github.com slash stretch r slash testify. And that should be good. So I downloaded it. It's good now. It added it. I saved it. Um, so this is what we're expecting. Remember, I did a uh, go get. So if you don't already have, have it installed on your machine, uh, definitely go grab it. Um, not nil. So it should be not nil, not no nil. Um, but let's we can go ahead and close this terminal now. It's no longer necessary. Um, let's go ahead and say we'll, we'll do another test case. We'll say function. We'll say test subtract. Uh, we'll follow the same strategy here. Testing dot t. We're going to say total equals subtract. It's going to be one and three. Doesn't really matter what we choose for this example, but we're going to say assert dot not nil uh, t total and we're going to say again uh, the total should not be nil and we're also going to say assert and you could do as many of these assertions as you want whatever makes the most sense for testing your particular function but we're going to say equal we're going to say t let's say that we're expecting it to be negative two and we're saying the total and we're saying uh, expecting negative two. Doesn't really matter what you provide in the, in the error message here. And I forgot a comma. All right, so we have our test, our test cases here. Let's go ahead and run them. We're gonna say run. Uh, we're gonna say, uh, let's go ahead and uh, go run. What we could do is we could say test, uh, go ahead and try this. So it ran the tests, um, they all passed. Uh, because everything, everything, uh, all the values were expected. So let's go ahead and change things up. Let's go ahead and make that a five or a 65. I made a typo, but it doesn't matter. It's going to prove our point. We're going to run it again. Uh, so it passed. So assert equals 65. Uh, that that shouldn't have been. So it failed. Um, so um, let's see why it failed on only one of them. So I must have made a, a mistake somewhere around here for test add. Assert equals. So it's only testing the subtract. Uh, let's see why. Oops, wrong one. All right, perfect. So it tested both of them. I don't know if somehow I was running just the test on test subtract. Uh, let's go ahead and make them both incorrect now. And I'm going to go, uh, let's see if I could run it this way again. So I ran it this way again. It, it's, it says this time it failed. Um, so the first one for main test.go on uh, line 11. So it was expected 65. We got an actual value of four. Um, so it threw our test case. Um, so we'll fix that fix it back to four, we'll run it. Uh, it worked this time, but like it should, test failed. Um, so we'll make that two again. We'll run it. You get the idea here. Um, so the whole point of this is, well, we, we wanna figure out all the test scenarios and it's very important that you should provide a lot of different assertions. Um, so two is, in this case, it's probably fine. Um, but when you're testing a more elaborate function, you wanna be able to um, send in any kind of test scenario that you can so that way it could all be automated so that way the user won't ever have to run into this problem. Um, so these are just very simple test to add and test subtract. Um, they perform as they should. What we want to do now is we want to test uh, the HTTP side of things so we want to be able to test some kind of web service. Um, so we're going to go back to main.go. I'm going to be using a library called the Gorilla Mux so it's a multiplexer. Um, I've, I've used it in several of my other examples. That's how we're going to be uh, setting up our HTTP server, and then we're going to set up tests around it. So let's go ahead and we're back in our main.go file. Uh, let's go ahead and say uh, function. Let's go ahead and say um, root endpoint. We're going to call it whatever we want. This is uh, a handler function for our endpoint, so it'll get triggered when our endpoint is reached. Uh, we're going to say response, and that's going to be http.responsewriter. Then we're going to say request. And that's going to be HTTP dot request. Now, um, what we're going to say is we're going to say uh, response dot 
write header. It's going to respond with uh, code 200, so success. And we're going to say response dot write. It's going to be a slice of byte. And we're going to say something simple like hello world. Nothing complicated here. Uh, inside of our main function, what we do need to do is we need to say router. And router equals um, mux dot new router. Now, if you don't already have uh, the multiplexer, you would do a go get and you would say go get. Uh, it's like github.com slash gorilla slash mux. Uh, definitely do a Google search. It's a good it's a good multiplexer. I use it all the time. Um, but once we have that, we can say router dot handle function. And the path for this is let's just go ahead and use the root path. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can change that up later. But we're going to say root endpoint. And we're going to say methods. And that's going to be a get request endpoint. Finally, we're going to say log.fatal. Say HTTP dot uh, listen and serve. We're going to serve it on port 12345. And we're going to pass in the router. Now, the whole assumption here is that we're serving it this application but we're not actually going to serve it we're going to we're using this so that way we can actually write a test against it so we want to test this endpoint to make sure we get back the data that we're requesting so we can go back to our uh, main test go file where we can actually write our tests and make sure everything's performing correctly um, so we'll go ahead and leave our previous test in there it's fine uh, what we want to do is we want to say uh, first of all we need to set up our router uh, because our router, this main test function, it's not really going to work against our main function uh, in the same sense that you think it would. Um, so the easiest thing, in my opinion, would be to just say router. And this returns a mux.router. And what we can say is router equals mux.router. So we're basically going to set up the same stuff that we saw in the previous example. So we're going to say router.handle function. And we're going to say the path is going to be uh, root root path. And we're going to say root endpoint. So the, the difference here is that root endpoint is not anything in our test file. It's in our main.go file. And we're going to say methods. Uh, and this is going to be a get method. And then finally, uh, we're going to return the router. And we're not actually going to serve it. Uh, because we're not actually going to run this application. We're just going to... Um, we're just going to be using it as a test case. So let's see what we're, we've got a problem here. Router, this should be new router. And we can save it. All right, so we have the router set up. Uh, it'll return it. So we can actually write our test function now. We can say function test uh, root endpoint. We'll, we'll keep the same naming convention. We'll remember, what matters here is the test part, uh, not so much what comes after, just the test. Um, te a t and we'll say test uh, testing dot t and we'll say request and this is where we're going to use the HTTP uh, part of the network uh, package. We're going to say request. We're going to ignore the error here. Uh, we're going to say HTTP dot new request. It's going to be a get request against the root endpoint path and then nil. For the body, we're not passing any body. What we're going to do now is we're going to handle a response, and we're going to say HTTP test dot new recorder, and we're going to say router dot serve HTTP response request, and then we're going to figure out what to do with the response. Um, so we're, we're passing our request, uh, we're, we're recording the response in this new recorder, all part of the HTTP package, not the, not the multiplexer that I'm using. Uh, but we're going to say assert, uh, and for one, we're going to say equal uh, T200, so that's the expected response. Um, and we're going to say uh, response.code, and we're going to say uh, OK response is expected. So if we wanted to, let's go ahead and test it, see what we get. I'll save it. And then I'll run it. We'll see what happens. Um, so everything succeeded as normal. Let's go ahead and say that uh, we're expecting a 400 response. Uh, we'll run it. And it, it failed because we were expecting a 200 response. 
Um, so now let's let's see if we can maybe do something else. Maybe maybe we want to see what uh, comes back in the actual response body. So let's first of all, I kind of forgot what comes back in the response body. So maybe we can say fmt dot print line uh, response, and we'll see if anything comes back. Um, so it comes back with a map. Um, so let's see. That might be the body. See if that's the body here. Yeah, so that's the body. Um, so what we can say is we could probably say something like assert dot equal t. Uh, what's expected? Um, so let's go ahead and say hello world. And I know I misspelled it here on purpose. And we can say response dot body. Uh, and we can say uh, incorrect body found. We'll go ahead and run it. And it failed because uh, it expected, well, first of all, it expected a string. Um, I'm not quite sure what it returned, a buffer maybe. Um, so let's see if we can say a string. No. Let's figure out what, what response body is. It's a, it's a buffer. So let's see, uh, body dot string. See if that makes it better. So it failed, expected hello world, got actual hello world. Let's go ahead and fix it. And we'll say run. Uh, and this time it succeeded as normal. So let's, let's just do a recap um, and then uh, we'll figure out what, what exactly we did here because we did quite a bit. Uh, this video is getting a little long. Uh, but first of all, what we did was we created these two standard functions here, just a, just a very basic add and subtract. Um, and then we created some unit tests inside of a main underscore test file. Um, and this allows us to uh, test our, our main file. Um, and um, by adding a prefix of test to each one of these functions, that means that it's a, a test function. Hence this router function, it wasn't actually tested against because it's just a standard function in this test file. Um, but what we did is we, we first of all tried using that function from our main.go file. And we came up with these assertions scenarios on what might break it or pass it. And the more of these scenarios, the better. Now, when it came to our actual testing an HTTP endpoint, uh, well, we created a root endpoint um, using the Gorilla Mux multiplexer. Uh, and then we have this root endpoint function. It doesn't really matter what the actual endpoint path is. We don't really need to test against that. We just really need to test what's happening inside of the endpoint itself. Um, which we called root endpoint. So we went into main.test. Uh, we, we basically mocked up a endpoint to match what was inside of main.go. Uh, and then we wrote our tests against that uh, root endpoint function. So we created a new request, um, which is our get against the root path. And we uh, made a request and we recorded the response and we tested that response. Um, so it worked out pretty well. We used the actual router uh, for, this, for this mock and we were able to test uh, the body as well as the, the status code. So uh, this is kind of the gist behind actually writing tests. I mean, your tests are going to be a lot more complex than this, um, but it, it worked out well.